Opposition parties in Chad are condemning the entry of the country's military ruler into the 2024 presidential race. General Mahmoud Idris Deby seized power after his father's death, declared himself interim president, and pushed through a new constitution that enables him to run for president in this year's delayed elections. Moki Edwin Kezeka reports from neighboring Cameroon. This is the voice of Mohammed Zeni Badda, Secretary of Chad's former ruling Patriotic Salvation Movement or MPS Party, announcing that military ruler Mohammed Idris Deby is the party's candidate for the Central African State's presidential elections expected later this year. In the nationally televised broadcast such day, Bada said Chad is lucky to have Deby, an understanding leader who he said listens to his people and works for peace, development, and national concord as transitional president. Bada said members of MPS designate Deby as their candidate for presidential elections so Deby can continue the work. He has been doing to stop armed conflicts and political tensions and make Chad an emerging economy by 2030. However, Chad's opposition and civil society groups are condemning Deby's designation as candidate for the presidential race. The opposition and civil society groups say Chad is not a Deby dynasty that can be ruled only by a single family. Arbe Pahimi Padake is opposition leader of Chad's National Rally for Democracy. He contested and lost Chad's 2006 presidential election. Padake says he is certain the younger Debbie asked the MPS, Chad's former ruling party, to name the military ruler as candidate for presidential elections expected this 2024. <laughs> He says Deby, who wants to conserve power and continue his late father Idris Deby Itno's three decades iron fisted rule, should save Chad from descending into violence by not single handedly appointing people loyal to the military ruler to manage elections instead of people who are independent, neutral, and have the confidence of all Chad's political actors. Padake spoke on Chad State TV on Monday. He said Chad has remained poor and is devastated by armed conflicts and political tensions since the Deby family took power in 1990. General Mohammed Idris Deby became leader of Chad's Transitional Military Council in April 2021 after his father, Idris Deby Idnu, died on the front lines of a fight against northern rebels. The younger Deby was to head an 18-month transitional council, but in October of 2022, he dissolved the council and declared himself interim president. Deby organized a December 17 constitutional referendum, he said, paved the way for a return to civilian rule, and Chad's Supreme Court announced that the new constitution was approved by 86% of voters. Chad's opposition and civil society groups called the constitutional referendum a sham to prepare for an eventual election of Deby, a 39-year-old military general. Opposition parties, including the Rally for Democracy and the Union of Democrats for Development and Progress, said the referendum should have barred Deby from becoming a candidate. Meantime, interim president Deby has been designated honorary president of the MPS by a resolution of congressmen. Moki. Africa's biggest oil refinery has begun production in Nigeria. The company has said, ending a year's long wait for a plant that analysts said Mandi could boost refining capacity in a region heavily reliant on imported petroleum products. 
the US dollar 19 billion facility which can produce 650,000 barrels per day. He started to produce diesel and aviation fuel. The Dangote Petroleum Refinery Company reported Saturday. As Nigeria's first privately owned oil refinery, the project is a game changer for our country, it added. Nigeria is one of Africa's top oil producers but imports refined petroleum products for its use. The nation's oil and natural gas sector has struggled for many years and most of its state-run refineries operate far below capacity because of poor maintenance. The Dangote refinery is not a silver bullet for Nigeria's energy crisis, according to Olufora Wusu, an oil and gas expert who was part of a team that helped review Nigeria's national gas policy. But it is a great way to revive the sector and will help move Nigeria from being a major importer of refined petroleum products to self-reliant in domestic refining capacity. She is described by the company as the world's largest single-train refinery. The private refinery is owned by Africa's richest man, Nigerian industrialist Aliko Dangote. It is located on the outskirts of Lagos, Nigeria's economic hub, and operates alongside a fertilizer plant. The plant is expected to meet 100% of Nigeria's needs for gasoline, diesel, kerosene and aviation jet fuel at fuel production capacity. Dangote said last year when the facility was opened, at least 40% of the oil products made there also would be available for export, the company said. The plant received about 6 million barrels of crude so far from Nigeria's state oil farm, NNPC Limited to kickstart its operation, although it could take months before the refinery reaches full capacity, according to analysts. Some citizens have expressed hope that the new plant would soon help reduce consumer gas prices, which have tripled from a year ago after the government stopped 